Hi, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are back for another Bible study today. We're going to study in the, New, in the New Testament again in the book of Ephesians. It's the book right after the one we studied yesterday, which is Galatians. The books of Paul, the apostle. Love him deeply, but... Uh, I... Uh, I can relate with him a lot, you know what I mean? Just like King David in his heart and stuff, I can relate to him also a lot. When I read him, I, my soul mourns and I cry because I can feel it in my spirit. This, the words of the Bible are, is the spirit of truth and we have that, we have that same spirit of truth that was in Christ dwelling in us now. And we have put on the mind of Christ, okay? And we put on the body of Christ. So when I read the Word of God, which is Christ, and that means it is in me because Christ is in me, and Christ is the Word of God made flesh. And when I eat more and more of the Word, the deeper and deeper I get. And the more deeper in the Word I get, and the deeper it gets into me, okay? So when I speak and everything that comes out of my mouth is Scripture, that's because I'm deep. I am deep. And Christ is deep in me, and I'm deep in Him. And I don't ever feel bad for that. So I pray... In Jesus' name, Father, that you give those watching, Lord, a deep relationship the way that me and you have, Lord. Let them feel the love that I feel for you the way I feel it, Lord. Open their spiritual eyes and ears to the way that mine are open, Lord. Give them understanding and knowledge and discernment, Lord, according to your understanding and your discernment and your knowledge, because our thoughts are not your thoughts, Lord. Your understanding is not our understanding, Lord. Your spirit, we must worship you in your spirit and truth. Spirit and truth, Lord. Guide us and direct our paths according to your will. Help us to seek your kingdom above all things, Lord. Help us to plant and water seeds in people's hearts and win souls for you as much as possible, Lord. Guide me, Lord. Let your spirit lead me, Lord. Fill us full of the Holy Spirit. Strengthen our discernment and faith. Suit up us up with all of your heavenly armor and strengthen our righteousness and have mercy of forgiveness upon our souls for the sin we commit and the weakness of the flesh, Lord. But thank God we died on the cross to the flesh and we rose again in the spirit, Lord, and we now serve you in spirit and truth. And we aren't held accountable for those things no more because that, pipe, that price was paid and that battle was won on the cross. We just keep getting back up and walking in faith, Lord, no matter how much we fall. As long as we never get comfortable in our sin and as long as we never like it and as long as when we when we become to where we're numb and we don't feel condemned anymore that's when it's dangerous lord but as long as we keep getting back up and longing for you in our heart and spirit lord we serve you in our heart and spirit and mind lord guide us lord fill us full of your presence in jesus name set us on holy spirit fire for you again lord in jesus name give us a heart to receive your word and your spirit, Lord, and your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Whew. Thank you, Lord. God, all the glory be to you, Father, in Jesus' name. All the glory be to you, Father, in Jesus' name. All the glory be to you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, we're in the book of Ephesians, the New Testament. <clears throat> if you want to get your Bibles out and study along with me, that's good. But when you're studying alone, which you should be doing more than anything else, you should be studying your Bible alone. Between you and God, building yourselves up on your own most holy faith, developing developing that personal relationship between you and Christ. Okay, because he now dwells in you. The kingdom of God now dwells in us. You don't have to go searching anywhere else. It's in you. You just have to awaken to it. Uh, you have to be awoken to it. Your eyes have to be open to it. Your ears have to be open to it. Your heart has to be ready to receive it. Okay? Repentance is a change of heart, not just a change of mind. You have to feel it in your heart. God searches the matters of the heart. He knows our hearts. You can't fake him. So you're either on fire for God or you're cold for God, okay? But never be lukewarm because that's even more disgusting to him than being completely far, too far gone or on fire for him. He said in the middle... You're riding the fence, one foot in, one foot out, is disgusting. He will spew you out of his mouth on Judgment Day, it says. Okay, let's get to this. Ephesians, New Testament, Epistle of Paul, the Apostle, Chapter 1. Dear Father, give me the words to speak. Take away my own understanding, my own thoughts, and my own opinions, Lord, because none of that matters. 
Only what matters is what you will it, and let your spirit speak through me and guide me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him, in him, before the foundation of the world, he chose us to be in him, and him in us, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having pre predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his own will, not anything that we've done, no works, nothing we deserved, because of the pure good pleasure of his own will, and because God so loved the world, okay, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved Jesus Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound to toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dis dispensation of the fullness of times, in the end of the world, in the fullness of the age, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Okay? So we're all, everything un under heaven, Everything in heaven and on earth are going to all be gathered in God inside of Christ. Okay? In him who also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom also, having believed, you were sealed. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is, a, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, which is us, to the praise of his glory. Now listen. In him we trusted, and after you heard the word of truth, and it took root, and you believed in faith, the gospel of our salvation, okay, we believed it, and we were sealed sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And that sealed us and guaranteed our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Until Jesus returns, we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And when we, until we are redeemed. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your not understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Jesus' inheritance is all the saints. All, all of us is the inheritance of Jesus Christ by what he did on the cross. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, not ours, which he worked in Christ mightily when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, which is where our lives are, awaiting our redemption. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in which is to come. Shh, be quiet, Max. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. So we're the church, right? All the Christians. And the church is the body of Christ. So we are all together as one, his body. We are different members in the, in, in the body, but we are all together his body, different members. Toes, feet, fingers, ankles, kneecaps, you know what I mean? The entire body, arms, legs torso, head, well Christ is the head though, and God is the head of Christ, and man is the head of woman, that's what the Bible says, the fullness of him who fills all in all, so he's in all of us and we're all in him, chapter 2, 
and you he made alive, who were dead in your sins, your trespasses, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he had loved us, even when he, we were dead in trespasses and sins, he made us alive together with Christ. By the grace you have been saved, by God's grace we've been saved, and raised us together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For the grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should brag or boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for the good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, the Jews, made in the flesh by hands, that at this, but at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who, made, who has made both one. He's made both Jew and Gentile one in himself and has broken down that middle wall of separation having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two so he took the jew and the gentile and put us all in himself and created a new creation between the th between the three thus making peace and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross thereby putting to death the enmity and he came and preached peace to you and were who were afar off and to those who were near for through him we both have access by one spirit to the father through Jesus Christ by the one spirit that lives in all of us the spirit of truth that was in Christ now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for the dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Chapter 3. Man, I love this book, and I'm feeling the Holy Spirit, boy. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow hearers of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his own power. To me, who am less than the least of all saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which is Christ in us from the beginning of the ages, has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the word of God, and God spoke everything to, into existence, which means he spoke everything with his word, which is Jesus Christ, so he spoke everything through Jesus Christ and with Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to his internal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, walk boldly to the mercy seat. Therefore, I ask you that 
you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Our tribulations, our sufferings is really working towards our glory, for our glory. It's building up our, our glorified bodies that we will be changed into by the by the sufferings we now go through in the flesh is building up our glorious bodies that we will have on the day that Jesus returns and we are changed from glory to glory and we are made from mortal to immortality and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. We are building those bodies by the sufferings we go through now in the flesh. It's for a reason. It's building something more glorious than you could even imagine. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted, rooted, and, gr and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Chapter 4. Man, I love, I love Paul's books. I love all the Bible, but I just love Paul's books. It speaks to me all. It should you too. If you have that Holy Spirit of truth in you, if you bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which we talked on yesterday. Chapter 4. I therefore, the prisoner of, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness and with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Yes, we go through long suffering because it's building our glorious bodies to come. But we have peace of mind through that suffering because we know there's a much far greater reward in the end endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling the one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of christ's gifts therefore he says when he ascended on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now, this he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, to, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the body, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body, the church, thus all the Christians, for the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former con conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts of the flesh, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God, and true righteousness and holiness. The man that you died on the cross and rose up in, into, become that new man. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. We are all in the same body. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer. But let him labor, working with his hands what is good 
that he may have something to give him who has need. Let not corrupt the word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and necessary, edification, that it may impart grace or a spiritual gift to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, loving your neighbor as yourself, which is anyone, even as God in Christ forgave you. Chapter 5. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving over, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is, all, is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, and we are that light. For whatever makes manifest is light, therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you life and light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your husbands as, as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are the members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and two shall become one flesh this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church because when he comes back he's coming to take the church and his bride which is the church and he's going to marry it and become one flesh with it nevertheless let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband chapter six if the video cuts off i'm sorry but it's getting close this is the last chapter. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, and for, this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart as to Christ. Not with eye service as men, men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you masters do the same things to them, giving up threatenings, knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The shield of faith the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God, 
the helmet of salvation, the boots of the peace of the gospel, and the breastplate of righteousness. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, of this world, against spiritual wickedness and hosts in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you will, may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having show, showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith, which with, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil, the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that it might be that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing. Titius, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you this at very purpose, that you may know our affairs, and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. That's it. Whew. I love you guys. God bless you. Please like and share this video. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel because I can't go live until I've had a thousand like, or I mean a thousand subscribers. But I do this for the will of God, not for myself. I love you guys. Even whether there's somebody watching these videos ever, ever, I'm going to keep doing them because I do it for God, not you. I mean, I do it because I love my neighbor, but I love God. And this is the will of God, and I walk it in, out in faith. I love you guys. God bless you. Always test the spirits. There's many spirits. The Bible says test the spirits and make sure it's of God. Put it to the word of God, and if it's not in there, then it ain't of God. I love you guys. God bless you.